Welcome to the session. We are looking at developing positive personality and the attitude for excellent living. Developing positive personality and the attitude for excellent living. It takes a certain personality. It takes a certain attitude towards life before you can experience excellent living. And the mistake that many people get to make is when I will have this before I start living excellently. And that's why there are many who get old and die without ever experiencing the true meaning of excellent living. If you are that kind of person you have in mind, when I will have a good job, then I will start living life. Oh my God, you are already on the wrong path of life. Oh, when I will travel abroad, I will start living life excellently. Oh, when I will get married, I will start living life excellently. Then you have missed it already. You are already living a very horrible, you are already, you are already a very unhappy human being. It takes a certain personality, a certain attitude for you to start living an excellent lifestyle. And many people, many people do not understand this attitude and personality. And it is important that every PPA member, anybody who is serious about life, they should aspire to live an excellent life. They should aspire to become better. We should live in a way that brings genuine happiness and excitement and fulfillment and significance as far as our lives are concerned. Because until you are able to develop a certain personality and a certain attitude, you may never reach an optimum level as far as living life is concerned. According to the Collins English Dictionary, positive personality, if they say you are positive, you are positive about things, it means that you are hopeful and confident and you think of the good aspects of a situation rather than the bad ones. It means you are positive. Something happens. Something is going on. You are in a situation which doesn't seem good, but you intentionally, you are hopeful and you are confident and you think about the good aspects of that situation rather than the bad ones. For example, you are listening to me right now and your electricity goes off and your power goes out. Now that is a bad situation. Somebody who doesn't have a positive personality will get angry, may shout, may just be toxic, for example, not just, nothing good comes to mind. But somebody with a positive personality will be hopeful, oh, the light may come back any moment from now. Oh, you know, I will inform Mr. Joyber that the light went off and he will send me the link to the recorded station. Oh, while waiting for the light to come back, or while waiting when the session is done and when I get power and get the recording link, let me take this time now and pray. Let me pray for my future. Let me pray for my destiny. Let me pray for today. Let me begin to think about my today and arrange my today's priority. 
You see, you see the difference? That's somebody who has a positive personality and who is hopeful and confident or focuses on thinking about the good aspects of a situation rather than the bad one. But if that happens and you're focusing on the, on the negative and you're wasting your energy towards that, you have a very bad personality, which is not good for your rising. Now, look at the example I gave. Anybody who, who is doing those examples is definitely carrying out what I like to call value-creating activities. Thinking about the day, praying for the future, praying for the day, praying for the destiny, reflecting about yesterday. Now, those are value-creating activity. But if light goes off, you get angry, you shout, and you use bad energy, and then you go and sleep. Now, those are not value-creating activity, and that is a product of somebody who doesn't have a positive personality. Now, we have seen positive personality. Now, let us look at attitudes. In psychology, an attitude refers to a set of emotions, beliefs, and behaviors towards a particular object, person, thing, or event. That is attitude. Human beings, when it comes to attitude, we are very, we are very complex. That's why there are some people, you like some people, and you demonstrate good attitude towards them. You demonstrate good emotions. You behave towards them in a particular way. Then there are some people you don't like them at all. Your emotions towards them, terrible. Your behaviors towards them, terrible. There are some people you see them, you greet them, you, you give them a hug. Your emotions, your behaviors, your belief towards that person, they are good made of what you can call good attitude, positive attitude. But you see somebody don't really like to greet them. You don't like to, you just like to camouflage and just wave. You don't like maybe how they behave. You guys don't connect in terms of certain beliefs or how they behave. Just look at them from afar, right? That is attitude. It's the same like an event. There are some events that when you see, you are not excited about. But there are some events, let's say, a peep, the next PPS summit that will be coming up. You are like, oh, you're so excited about it. You're so emotionally attached. You cannot wait. You believe that you're going to connect with people. You're going to, you're going to be transformed. You're going to take your life to the next level. You, you come to the summit. Your behavior is upbeat, positive energy everywhere. You are hugging people. You're getting contacts. You know, the attitude towards that event is different. And attitude towards an object, person, thing, or event contributes how much you get from that event, contributes how much you get from that person, and contribute how much you give to that person. You invest into that thing. You invest into that object. You invest into that event. What is the quality of your attitude towards your business? Uh -huh. What is the quality of your attitude towards your career? What is the level of emotions, beliefs, and behaviors towards that business? If it is not high and upbeat, then how much you invest into that business and career will, will still be deficient. It will not be up to 100%. Now, let's do a quick exercise. Let's do a quick exercise. On, on, on 10, tell me, rate yourself and write in the chat box. When you're faced with a bad situation, when you're faced with a difficult situation, what is the quality of your positive personality? How have you grown in terms of manifesting positive personality when you are in a difficult situation? On 10, rate yourself, let's see. 
seven and ten, four and ten, ten, five and ten, so six and ten, eight and ten, seven point five. Good. Keep it coming. Very powerful. This is very important in life. If you don't get your attitude, if you don't get your personality right, it is going to affect the kind of success that you will handle in your life. If you don't get your attitude towards certain things the right way, they will affect how much you invest into that thing and how much you get from that thing. Now, let's come to attitude right now. On a scale of 10, on a scale of 10, rate the quality of your attitude towards your career right now. Rate the quality of your attitude towards your career. Now, don't be in a hurry. Look at how much emotions, beliefs, how much, what are the kind of beliefs you have around your career right now? Look at how much you behave towards your career. Rate yourself on 10, let's see. Good. You can even take this to other things. Maybe your 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 your, your friends, your your the person you're dating, or your husband, your wife. Rate your attitude. What is the quality of your attitude towards that person? These are very important. If you must win, some of you, your careers, your business, that startup is not yet experiencing a boom because your attitude towards it is not up to five, is, is, is five percent, is five percent below. Let me give an example of somebody whose attitude is towards the business is five and below. For example, is you are still confused. For example, you are not yet 100 percent sure whether you are building a business or you're looking for a job. You see, your belief towards that business is not 100%. Your attitude, your emotions, your emotional attachment, your dedication, your willingness to move heaven and earth for that business is low. Therefore, how much you invest in that business is minimal. Therefore, the kind of results that you can manifest from that business will also be minimal. That is why somebody said your attitude de determines your altitude, how much you will rise. Your attitude towards your business will determine the altitude of your business. Your attitude towards your career will determine the altitude of your career. Emotions, beliefs, behaviors. When you get these three things right, as far as your career and business or whatever you want to achieve is concerned, oh my goodness, there is a level, there is a dimension where you operate from. Many people will not understand. Many will not understand. Many will not understand. That's what, that's what we're here today in this session. We have to work on your attitude. We have to set some boundaries, teach you some basic tools that you can use today and develop the attitude you need for excellent living. Many of you are not yet manifesting excellent living because you have the wrong personality and the wrong attitude. And that's why you cannot harvest so much out of life. You cannot engineer a lot out of this beautiful life God has given you. Attitudes are often the result of experience and upbringing. Very important. The way we behave right now is as a result of our experiences, as a result of how we are brought up. A child who was brought up not to know that there's lack and poverty. There's a way they face life. There's a, there's a kind of attitude that they exhibit. There's a kind of confidence they manifest. They, they have this attitude, I can get anything I want. They have this go-getter attitude. There were some people, like, I always like to con, 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 um, 
compare my attitude back then and my daughter's attitude. She grows in a dispensation where she believes everything is possible. Everything she wants, she can get it. But me, I don't come from that background. So that's why it took me time to change my, my mindset from that of a loser and a poor boy to that of a winner. It, had to, it took me a lot of time to work on that mindset and attitude. But my daughter, she doesn't have to, she doesn't have that work. She believes everything, you go get it. You ask it and you get it. You work hard for it, it happens. That's her mindset. Because our bringing contributes to that. That's why you need to be careful about the kind of things you experience on a daily basis. Sometimes you intentionally avoid certain things because they contribute to your attitude. Like I was talking earlier, I'll give an example. Some of you stop buying from bank market every day. Stop buying from, from quarter market every day. You go to buy from market, it's, it's dust bin, it's dirty. People are dirty. They're scattered. Drop out. Go and buy from the supermarket. That experience contributes to your attitude and personality. I was giving that example. Some of you are already parents. Be conscious how you raise your kids. There are some places I intentionally take my daughter to. When we're going out, if either a mall, a supermarket, or a top-notch restaurant, it's intentional. There are some things I want her to experience. It contributes to the kind of personality. She, she would not have low self-esteem. She would not have low confidence. She would not have a minimal personality. It's important to her. Because these things will have an important, it would definitely influence her behavior and how she responds to certain things. Same for myself. There are certain things that I started fighting by changing certain things that I do, certain things that I experience, and they greatly contributed to my behavior and the personality that I embody. So the good news is you can change your attitude. Start changing your daily experiences. Like some of you, a lot, a lot has changed in your life since the day you joined, joined, joined PPA. You are being coached, you are being taught, you are being transformed on a daily basis. You keep hearing things that exposes you and pushes you to face life differently. So your personality a few months ago and your personality today, there are two different things. Let's go do the scaling exercise. On the percent, let's use percentage this time. Tell me, how, how do you think that PPS contributed or these sessions that we have, have contributed to your personality and attitude towards life? Just use a percentage and look at it. Before you came to me, of course, you had some you, already, you, are, you, you we are already working on your personality or you already have some level of attitude, but just add a percentage. Um, how many percent has PPA contributed to your personality, to your attitude towards life? But now as a result, it has affected your excellent lifestyle. Oh, wow. 90%, 70%, 80%. That is bigger than what I expected, seriously. Excellent. Happy to see that. Good. And, and this is just a chart for you. Be intentional about these things. Be intentional about these things. They are critical for your rising, for you to win. Oh, I'm seeing all of that. Now, let, let us briefly talk about the dimensions of attitude because it's important. Guys, please take note of this. Take note of these dimensions. The day I noticed these dimensions, oh my goodness, I was, I started, uh, from that day, I became very intentional, very intentional about certain things in my life. Sometimes when certain things happen, there's a way I look at them. One of my friends says, I look at things like a chief priest. <laughs> Something is happening, I am analyzing from my head here and there. Now, let's, there are three of these dimensions. Please pick them out carefully and begin to look at yourself. And from today, begin to, you, 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 you will even use it today. This Saturday, they're going to face Saturday. You'll see it. 
Now, the first dimension, the first dimension is the attitude of strength. The attitude of strength. The attitude of strength. Strong attitudes are those that are firmly held and that highly influence behavior. Yes. The kind of attitude strength that you have under this dimension greatly influences how you behave towards life, towards your business. People tend to have stronger attitudes about things, events, ideas, and people they have considerable knowledge and information about. Now, and now here's, here's the trick. Therefore, therefore, if you want to have strong, want to have a higher dimension of attitude strength towards your business, please know more about that business. This is where knowledge is very important. Knowledge contributes a lot to the quality of your attitude. That startup that you want to run, that business, that, that, that empire that you want to build, for you to command the right attitude strength towards that business, you need to have considerable knowledge and information about that business. It affects your attitude a lot towards that particular event idea or that particular person. Oh, before you know that, before you call that person my good friend, before you call that person my excellent friend, before your attitude strength towards that person is so deep and so strong, you need to gather info and knowledge about that person. It goes same to business idea. It goes same to your business idea. You're starting a business idea. You're doubting. Your, your energy towards that business is not strong enough. Automatically, your attitude strength is weak. And if you have limited market research information, you have limited product information, you have limited knowledge about marketing strategy, your attitude strength towards that business will become weak. And when it is weak, it automatically affects your behavior towards that business. And when your behavior is affected towards that business, automatically the actions that you need to take for that business to succeed will be minimal. And when the actions are minimal, results automatically are minimal. You see the chain? So we need to be careful about this. Like the other day I shared in the group, you see me, I am willing to move heaven and earth for my vision or I will die trying in the process. Oh, my attitude strength towards my career and business is damn strong, massively strong. I have, I have this firm belief, firm belief. And that's why my behavior towards my career, my behavior towards the work I do, is so excellent. You see, I can do morning school throughout the year if I wish I had the time. Every day I can teach you for 365 days. Every day. I will not lack info to teach. I've never been there. I tell you guys, oh, why would I teach this people today? There will always be info. There will always be wisdom to share. My behavior is influenced by the quality of my attitude strength. So that career you want to develop, my dear people, that business you desire to build into an empire, what is the quality of knowledge and information you have about that business? If you don't have enough, how much research? That's why there are some business people they pay and they buy research documents about an industry. They pay and they buy some knowledge to understand how the industry is evolving. They buy data insights and analysis just to understand because having considerable knowledge about the industry, about the sector, determines their attitude strength towards that industry, which automatically affects 
or influence their behavior and decision-making, which turns to the right actions. This is the first dimension of attitude. Pay attention to it. You need to ensure that you have strong attitudes. People tend to have stronger attitudes about things, about events, about ideas, about careers, about businesses, about the people they, have ma they are married to, they are dating, when they have considerable knowledge and information about any of these things. It could be observation, it could be reading, it could be just chatting. Many things can lead to you having considerable knowledge and information. You feel that you have your energy towards your business is not enough the way you want. Check if your attitude strength is enough. If it's not enough, check the quality of data, the quality of information and knowledge you have about that particular business. The second dimension, the dimension of attitude accessibility. The accessibility of an attitude refers to the ease with which it comes to mind. For example, there are some people, there are some people that they quickly access negative attitudes because it's not inside of them. When something happens, you get angry anyhow, you talk anyhow, you make funny decisions anyhow, then you regret later. Your first attitude to access is, a neg is, is, is negative. It's not positive. It means that your negative attitude is stronger than your positive attitude. And that's why many people you have abused your helpers. You have abused somebody who, who should have recommended you. You have negatively spoken in public and somebody should have helped you say, oh, this one, the character is terrible. Some of you ladies and even gentlemen, you have lost good husbands and good wives because the first thing you can access as attitude is negativity. Something goes wrong, the first thing that comes to your mind are negative thoughts. It means it is not inside of you. You have not built the capacity to manifest positive attitude. The question I have for you, when you are in a situation, when you are in an abrupt situation, which attitude do you access first? Entrepreneurs, Workers who are in leadership positions, check yourself here. Check yourself. Some of you who are workers, some employees consider you bad employees because when they make mistakes, the first thing that appears, the first attitude of you that manifests is that of negativity. It's a negative attitude that manifests. That's the first thing that your mind access. The first thing that you access is negativity. Something is wrong. In general, highly accessible attitudes tend to be stronger. What does that mean? If you always access negative things first, then it means your negative attitude is stronger than your positive attitude and you need to start working on it. Many of you know yourself, when things go wrong, when a client doesn't buy from you, when a friend gossip about you, when an open door you are expecting, when that door is closed, when a friend steps on your toe, or when a subordinate or fellow employee makes an error. Any of these funny, difficult things that can rise up. What is the first attitude that you display? The one that you display is the one your mind quickly access. And your mind only access 
what you have built inside of you over the years. There are some of you, your green families where they shout anyhow, they are visible anyhow. The anger is like it's in the family DNA. So that's what you carry around your head. In the workplace, you manifest it. In, on the street, you manifest it. Anyway, you find yourself, you manifest it. Your upbringing and your experiences have contributed to that negative attitude. And that's the first thing that you accept. Some of you must have even lost jobs because you have, you, in the, you, you have negatively manifested that negative attitude and you are sacked. You have lost good relationships because you have negatively manifested that attitude because that was the first thing that, that your mind can access and you and your mind on the your body on the act where your mind is going to. If you have lost something important because your mind quickly access negative attitude, raise up, indicate in the chat box. Just say, just say, I, I understand. I understand. Just write, I understand. They mean, oh no. <laughs> You have experienced this. They're just right in the chat box. That I understand. That I know where you're coming from, man of God. <laughs> right? Good. You see, people understand what I'm saying. So we need to be careful about this. In the workplace, in business, in our personal lives, in our relationships. You see, so you can never manifest beyond your personality. So this is a second dimension that you need to work on immediately. You need to work on, invest time and work on it. Because you need your mind to always access the positive attitude. There are many advantages of accessing positive attitude first always advantages. You think the right way, you think creative, you look at different options, alternatives, you act with a long lens sustainability. They're only positive things. But with a negative attitude, you shout, you disrespect somebody, and boom, you later discover that this person could have changed your life. This person should have given you a business contract, an opportunity, should have endorsed you. Now you have lost that person. Always be on the right side of things. The last dimension, attitude ambivalence. Attitude ambivalence. This is the last attitude dimension. This way you are contradictory. Ambivalence of an attitude refers to the ratio of positive and negative evaluation that make up an attitude. This way sometimes the way somebody behaves, you are like, no. But based on the person that I know, based on what I'm seeing, it doesn't reflect that attitude ambivalence. There's some contradiction with the act and the attitude that you know. And we all always get to, we, we all as humans, since we have emotions, we can always get to this dimension where there's some contradiction. But when you know this and you are consistently investing in yourself to make sure that you, the second, uh, um, um, uh, which is uh, attitude uh, um, accessibility is right. You're always accessing. You have trained your mind, your belief system, your actions, everything to always access positive attitude first in any situation you will minimize a lot of attitude ambivalence or contradictions. That way there are some people that they have so grown, they have so matured that consistently they behave the right way in terms of attitude. You hardly hear them disrespect people. You hardly hear them shout at people carelessly. You hardly hear them uh, 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 um, do many things that are not good. Like husbands who beat their wife, gender-based, gender violence or marriage violence. It is because they have a problem with accessibility. When something goes wrong, their mind access beatings first. Their mind access uh, um, 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 verbal violence first. 
before care, before love, before kindness. But there are other husbands that are so mature that when something goes wrong, the wife makes, uh, takes the wrong action. What their mind access, even though there's an error, even though he is angry, what the mind access first is love, is care, is uh, um, respect, is, oh, this is my wife, no matter what has gone wrong. There's a, there's a better mature way to discipline or to show that I am not happy. You, you get the point? But then now, many get to reach the ambivalence level where the ratio of positive and negative evaluations make up the whole stuff. They just get, you like, but wait, you are supposed to manifest this attitude as a husband. But now you're beating the wife. Uh, what's wrong? It's, it doesn't reflect. So we need to be conscious about the first two. Be very conscious about these dimensions. You need to have the right attitude strength. That's why every human that will go places seek relevant information and knowledge. And that's why you're in this session right now because you're building your attitude strength. Then, and that contributes to what the kind of attitude that you can access. Grow in your mind, grow in your personality, grow in your lifestyle, grow in every important thing so that when you are, when you are so grown, when you are so grown, your mind always access positive attitude first. Why people are going hell to scatter making wrong decisions, getting angry anyhow, messing up and regretting, you hardly regret because your mind always access the right attitude first. You take time, you plan, you analyze, and you make the right decisions and you sustainably grow your career and your business because you have trained your mind to access the right attitude, not the wrong attitude. When you do the first two right, you will not be in the third dimension of attitude ambivalence because you have, you, you have built the right attitude over time. Therefore, therefore, it is your responsibility to retrain your brain to look on the bright side of life. Train your brain. I'm using the word retrain because many of us are coming from somewhere. We are from families where they brought up in a particular way. We are from schools, we are from quarters, we are from communities, we are from friends, we are from a circle of friends where the, the experiences and the knowledge and the activities and the connections, they must have trained you in a particular way. Some are good, some are not good. So you need to retrain yourself to look on the bright side. If you allow yourself to keep a positive state of mind, your attitude will follow. Therefore, having and maintaining a positive attitude is vital for success in life and business. That is why one of the world's famous quotes says, your attitude determines you are rising in life. Your attitude will determine how you will rise in that career. Your attitude towards that business will determine how that business will rise. It is super important for success in life and business. Having a positive personality, having a positive attitude makes you more creative. This is one thing I can personally attest to it. Anger is too precious. Anger takes a lot of your precious energy. Anger takes a lot of your brain cells. Anger takes a lot of things from you. Negative attitude takes a lot of things from you. I cannot remember the last time I was angry and mad at something. That's why my mind is, some of you before three o'clock in the day, you are so tired. Your mind cannot think straight because during the day you are shouting up and down. 
You are not creative enough because your mind is so dirty. It's so toxic. You are not creative. Some of us, we can create from now to the next 10 years. We are always in a creation mode, conceptualization mode. Do you know why? Attitude. When you have the right positive attitude, you cannot be a strategist. You cannot be a creative thinker. You cannot be a futuristic thinker if you don't have the fundamental element of positive attitude. Because it makes you very creative. Your mind is jovial. Your mind is at peace. Your mind is relaxed. You are living excellently. Your excellent living is not determined by how much of your bank account, by how much you have in your mobile money, by how much cash you have. It is determined by the kind of personality that you embody. Positive attitude also helps you make better decisions. There are some of you, you're always coming out of bad decisions here and there, now and then, because you're, 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 you're fond of making bad decisions. You don't even think straight. Something happens, boom, you just make decisions. And then you start struggling to get out of that bad decisions. Some of you don't even ask for advice, mentor, a coach. Something happens, boom, straight. You make the decision. Before that, realize it, oh, I messed up big time. Big time messed, mess up. So we need to invest to do this. So take responsibility for your actions, for your thoughts, and your feelings. Take responsibility for these things. No one can make you feel anywhere anywhere that you do not want to feel. No one, no one can make you feel anywhere that you do not want to feel. If a friend gossips about you, you hear it and you are angry, you have given them permission to make you feel that way. But if you hear it, you laugh, say, so see me, I am way bigger than this. You see me, I get things done the right way. So whatever gossips I know you're doing, you're all telling lies. I know that's why I always encourage you guys, please, in anything you do, make sure you're on the side of ethics, morality, and laws of the land. So that when anybody gossips about, you're working in the office, make sure you're not stealing office stuff, you're not stealing money, you're not doing the wrong things. When staffs at, when other staffs are trying to set you up in the office, you know yourself now, oh, I'm bigger than this. You will go up, you come down, I am still better than you. Nobody can make you feel anywhere that you do not want to feel. But if people give opinions about you, people say things about you, and you get angry, you get mad, you get sad about it, you, you have given them the permission to make you feel that way. And it, it is also proof that your thoughts and your feelings, they are not under your responsibility. They are not under your responsibility. You leave it to chance. You leave it to chance. And that is not for somebody who will go places. You will not go places. If you keep allowing people to make you feel the way you're feeling. You see me? They have not born the conspiracy. Conspiracy, they have not born the setup. They have not born anything that can take away my happiness. I have already lived it in, in future possible times. So you will not make me feel the way I don't want to feel. I will only feel the way I choose to feel. That is my responsibility. That alone is my responsibility. And something that's very important in building the right personality and the right attitude is for you to start being proud of your accomplishments and the hard work you have done. 
it is very important in building the right personality. Very important. We are getting to the practical sessions now after that deep foundation. Now, I want us to start from here. Many at times, we manifest the wrong personality or the wrong attitude because we don't know our strength. We don't know, we don't recognize our capacity. Sometimes just looking back and looking at the things that you have gone through can give you the right personality you need to go through this difficulty you're facing right now. Let me tell you one time. So I was going through something. Then I remembered how I survived in Baminda on the street. I didn't know where I was supposed to sleep. That, that, that was where I ended up selling in the beer parlor one night because I didn't go there because I really wanted to sell. I went to so I could sell and have where I could sleep where it's safe. That was the only reason. Then I remember that, that particular week. I said, but you survived that week. What about this now? This, this is not up to that. And then there were times I was going through stuff. I said, look, man, you, you, you saw yourself through the university. You did all the car wash, all the odd jobs, and you sponsored yourself 100 of thousands every year for your university fee. Then this, this, this one to pull you down. No, no, no. You, you, you have achieved better than this. You have fought better. You, you have fought stronger battles than this. Then this particular battle is not enough to make you lose the war. That's me talking to myself. And when I do that, it recharges my personality. Oh, there was a time in Kumbu that, you know, something was going on and, and one powerful man was trying to fight me. And when I reported me to the state council and the SDO, but I passed that. They tried to set me up. But come on, I went through that. God accompanied me to went through that. So what about now? What about now that I even have more influence than 10 years ago? I even have more access, more powerful men than 10 years ago. What about now? I'm spiritually stronger than 10 years ago. So you see, you that's trying to set me up now, I'm going to come after you with everything I have. Automatically, I stop being worried about it. You see the difference? So sometimes we get to forget who we are truly. We get to forget the things that we have conquered. We get to forget the things that we have achieved which sometimes reminding yourself. I remember one time I was going through stuff and I, and, and I sat and I was, I, was, I was talking to, I was like, come on, why are you thinking like this? You and God have gone through things in your life better than these ones. You have so reason above challenges. You have conquered battles better than this. God has walked you through fires and valleys that are deeper, darker than this. Come on, why are you pulling out because of this little challenge? You have all it takes. You have all it takes to rise above this. And boom, I will set out with a different personality. I will set out with a different energy and I will get that thing sorted out in less than no time. You know why? Because I was reminded. I reminded myself of where I'm coming from. This is a critical element in building the right attitudes, in building the right personality. So I wanna challenge you. I wanna leak you this secret. Anytime, anytime you are going through stuff, think of how you survived in high school. Think of how you survived in the village. Think of how you survived in the university. Think of the previous things that you have gone through. You are still here, man. You are still here, young lady. So why do you wanna let that challenge eat you up? You have won better battles than this. Why are you thinking of suicide? Why do you want to lose the war of life when you can fight that? Why do you want to let one battle make you lose a war? A general focus on one battle at a time. A baby run away from battles and ends up losing the war. What are you going to do from today? Use your previous achievements and reignite the personality you need so you can win the next battle. So anytime you do this, look at your achievements. 
Look at your last six months. Let's talk, let, let's share just one. Let's share just one. Tell me one thing that you are so proud of in the last six months. Tell me one thing you have achieved that you are super proud of. Write in the chat box, let me see. You might not be explicit, but just, just, just one, general. What are you most proud of? What have you gone through that you're super proud of? All right. Spending quality time with the kids. Good. What have you achieved? Proud of getting your own house. Excellent. Proud of opening a restaurant. Excellent. Proud of saving money. Proud of joining a mentorship program. Excellent. Proud that you bought yourself a new phone. Excellent. You see, all of those things are critical. All of those things are critical. Proud of starting a business. So next time, next time you're facing difficulties, you say, no, 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 no. You see, the last time I hustled, I saved money, I raised money, and I bought myself a phone. So you see this land? I am going to get a land. I am going to hustle. I'm going to work hard and I'm going to get a land. You see, it is the same energy, attitude that you need just now in a higher dimension. You see, so many beautiful things that people are proud of. If you could achieve those things, come on, whatever is in front of you right now, you can conquer it like breakfast in the morning. You can conquer it. So don't let that little battle take away the war from you. Don't let that little battle take away the destiny manifestation from you. It is too small looking at where you're coming from. You have conquered better difficulties than this and you are still here. To continue building personality, an attitude that will take you places when it comes to excellent living. Let's answer the following questions. Number one, do you have beneficial and positive relationships? There is no way that you can talk about building attitude and personality without relationships. Can you proudly say that you have beneficial and positive relationships with friends, positive professional relationships. Can you say you have invested to have the right beneficial and positive relationships? For example, having a mentorship relationship is a positive relationship. There are some of you, you are not positive in your relationship. You are not respecting mentorship activities. It's not, you are not positive. So you cannot claim that you have a positive relationship with me if I'm your mentor, or you have a mentor somewhere else. You cannot claim that you have that relationship when you are not, you, you are not doing the right things as a mentee. Look at some of your high profile customers. Have you done your best to seal good relationships with them? Describe your top five positive relationships. Describe them. And how to describe them? Describe them in two major ways. Describe them in the first way, how do you create value in this relationship? What kind of value do you bring to this relationship? Then what kind of value do you get from that relationship? That's how I want to focus on this description. Now, after this session, Look at their top five relationships. Look at them carefully. Take one and diagnose it. How do I add value to this person? How, what kind of value do I get from this person? It could just be discussions. Or I have a friend that sometimes we, we just like to be together because we talk about our dreams. We encourage each other to keep on pushing forward because tomorrow's future possibilities 
they are too beautiful for us to give up today. That is important. That is important. List your top five negative relationships you need to outgrow or cut off. As I always teach you guys, there are two major things that can happen with any bad relationship. You outgrow them, and the place of outgrow them, you try to hold their hand to grow with you. When they don't want to grow, please cut them off. You are not Jesus Christ that came to save everybody. Jesus Christ came to save you so you can manifest your destiny and purpose. Anybody wants to draw you back, you can cut them off. You will not be punished for that. But do your best to help them grow with you. But there are two things. If they don't want to grow with you, they should not slow you down. If they slow you down, cut them off. Don't think twice. Cut it off. You know relationships that you are pampering, that are killing you. You know. You know relationships that you are pampering, that they are destroying you. No additional value. They only suck time from you. They only suck money from you. They only make you to be a bad wife or a bad husband. There are only negatively, there are only negative things attached to that relationship. One time I was passing, and my, my one of my kid sisters was talking with a friend. Just the things that friend was saying. I came closer to that her friend. I hold her ears. And I said, This is the first and the last time. I see you around my sister. I was dragging her ear. She left from there with speed. From that day, I've never seen that girl again. Cut them off. Friends that you share your dream to them, they say, ah, you want to show so you be who? Now you want to change Cameroon? Cut them off. They make you feel less of yourself. They don't make you feel beautiful, feel intelligent, feel powerful, feel influential. Cut them off. You only need somebody who can make you feel more of yourself, not feel less of yourself. You need somebody who can accompany you to rise to the top. You know them better than me. You know what they're taking out of your life and your destiny. They are not worth it. Cut them off. The next thing that is important when it comes to building personality and attitudes is how do you start your day? How do you start your day? Of course, since you're in PPA, it means you have, you have discovered the routine of starting your day right. Right? There are many people that face the day with the wrong attitude, with the wrong personality because they start their day the wrong way. Like I always advise many of you, when the, how you start your day will determine how you will run through your day. If you start your day angry, shouting, social media, you start your day reading bad news, start your day watching movies, you start your day doing nothing that is valuable. That is how you will destroy that day. You face the day with the wrong personality and with the wrong attitudes. But when you start your day with, with inspired devotion or prayers, you start your day with reading a book, a personal development book. You start your day with a hot coaching session like this. That is routine. That's the kind of routine that promotes positive energy to keep a positive attitude all day long. For those of you who pay attention to patterns, before you, if you look at before you join PPA, and if you don't know you start your day, you start your day, you start up, you wake up late, or you wake up at five, you lie down on your bed, you go on WhatsApp group and Facebook group, you browse, 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 then you jump out of doing house chores. If you look at the way those your days used to be like, and you look at the way your days are now, after you get to face the day, after each coaching session or after reading a book, 
you will see a difference. Can anybody say that they see a difference? Have, have you noticed a difference? Let's say before going through these sessions and then after going through these sessions, can you see a difference as far as your days are concerned? Okay, people say very big difference, great difference and all of that. Yes, it has a lot of power, a lot of power. Maintain that routine. Maintain that routine. The kind of personal routine, the kind of, of, of morning routine that you go through to start your day is very critical in contributing to your positive attitudes, which you need to behave the right way throughout the day to manifest the results that will change your life. Next important thing, am I aware of my state of mind and its changes? If I am in a negative state of mind, am I able to change it? If yes, explain how, if not, explain why not and change. Now we, we were talking about this already. Your state of mind will determine the kind of attitude that you will access first. If you have a negative state of mind, you need to start working on it on a daily basis. You need to start reading books that will instill the right mindset. You need to start buying courses. You need to go through coaching sessions to audit your mind, to edit your mind, delete certain things from that, from that hard drive, from that, from, from that brain, and instill new things. You need to start work on your daily habits and daily morning routines. You need to replace anything that contributes to your negative state of mind and begin to instill new routines and habits and activities that will contribute to the right state of mind. It is routine, habits, and activities that builds your state of mind. The books you read, the coaching you go through, the advices you receive, the kind of friends that you have, the kind of books that you read, the places you go, all of these things contribute to the state of mind that you need for you to win. You need to have a plan in place that you need to intentionally go through to develop the right state of mind. With the wrong state of mind, you always have the wrong attitude. And the wrong attitude has never produced excellent living in career and in business. Is my living space a positive environment? If not, what can I do to make it a positive environment? This is, very, this is a very important secret that many people don't pay attention to. You cannot expect to have a positive attitude. You cannot expect to have a positive personality if the environment where you spend most of your time is not a positive environment. The lighting in that place. You know, have you ever entered a building, a hall, or a five-star hotel, or a four-star hotel? Oh my God, the lighting in that room. So in so beautiful. The quality of the bed, the bed, the table, the carpet, everything is structured to give you a positive environment. The colors, bright colors, the cleaning. Now that is why. My office is always more beautiful than my house right now. Because I spend in 24 hours, I spend 16 hours and above. I'm in the house to come and sleep. Sometimes I sleep in the office three days straight anyway. I just come in the house, sometimes they're just like changing location. Just come and change dress and go back. <laughs> right? So my office, I spend a lot of time to make it look nice for me. The way is going to be good. The way it's going to be good that can, that can inspire my attitude, my mindset to be creative and look at things in the right direction. You see? So you need to pay attention. The, the quarters where you live, the environment where you go to, the places where you hang out. That's why I don't like beer parlors. I don't like... Um, uh, um, white stuff drinking spots. I don't like funny, funny. It's, they, they don't inspire anything good. They don't lead to anything. They don't inspire anything. Check your environment where you live. 
Is it a positive environment? What do you see every day? Does it inspire the right personality? Does it inspire the right attitude? I was, I was encouraging you guys already. Sometimes leave and just go buy from the supermarket. You may not buy expensive, 500, 1,000, even bamboo. Go and buy it. Now, I've asked one of my mentees, he was moving from this. I, I warned him, don't go, don't rent a house that is not a story building. Because I know this, this previous house. Said, go live in a story building that, that is good, that looks nice. If you don't see it, don't move. Keep looking for it. It's intentional. Those environments are important. Even your kind of environment where you live contributes the kind of access, the kind of people you can connect with. You're in an environment whereby you don't need relevant people in a store. You're going to buy, you're only buying the quarter quarter calabot store. Everybody's struggling from a place of poverty. So who can you connect with now in the store that can help you? You cannot help yourself. Environment. Go to places. Go to events. Expose yourself. Put yourself intentionally in the right environment. Invest in that. It's critical for your rising. So practical steps now to look at, to look at this. Number one, listen to your internal dialogue. When faced with a negative thought, turn it around to make it a positive thought. You need to intentionally listen to your internal dialogue. You're about to set up to do something. A voice is talking to you and telling you you're going to fail. It's impossible. No convert it. You cannot expect to have a positive attitude and personality when your internal dialogue is negative. It is your responsibility to convert it. And as I always tell you, the best way to convert a negative thought into a positive thought is for you to speak it out, declare it. That's why not everybody speaking to themselves on the road is mad or he's talking about problems. No, they are fighting an internal battle. Anytime, please pay attention to your internal dialogue. One of the most biggest battles you have to conquer is the battle against self. Your internal dialogue is very important. It contributes to your state of mind. It contributes to your personality. It contributes to your attitude. Anytime that negative internal dialogue is rising, please convert it to positive dialogue. Speak it out. Speak what you want to see happen. You're starting a business, oh, it's going to fail, it's not going to succeed. Speak it out. This business will go places. This business will rise. This business will employ 1,000 people and above. This business will make a monthly profit of a million francs and above. Speak the positive expectations to that negative thought and conquer it. You don't conquer thought with thought. You conquer thought with words, declarations, convicted, powerful, intentional declarations. Number two, interact within positive environments and with positive people. We spoke about this already. Now I'm just making a point for so we understand better. Do things with people who reinforce you in a positive way. It's okay to leave the house if your family people are so negative and go and be with people that are positive. Go places that have special meanings and positive memories or associations. Intentionally go to the right places. If, if you want to have the right way of thinking, move away from the wrong crowd and connect with people who have the positive mindset. This is a very important step when it comes to building and investing in the right personality that will produce excellent living. Number three, reading positive and inspiring books. Yes, 
One of the best ways to maintain a positive attitude is by reading positive books. These books serve to encourage, inspire, and teach people. Yes, one of the best ways to maintain a positive attitude is by reading positive books and inspiring books, books that build your personal development. Activity, name top six positive and inspiring books you read in the last six months. I know many of you write, even if you write zero, a book you have not finished, you have not read. In the chat box, in the chat box, please. I want people to write just one book, one amazing book you have read in the last six months. Write in the chat box, let us see. The title of the book and the author. The title and the author of the book that you have read in the last six months. Think and Grow Rich. Who is the author? Name the author's name. People are silent now, Abby. Okay. Give and Take by Adam Grant. Attitude is everything. No excuses by Brian Tracy. Good. Speak and inspire. Get it done now. Good, good, good. Yes, well done. Well done to have read books in the last six months. Well done to everybody. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Powerful books that you put better with. Name top positive and inspiring books you will read in the next six months. Right now, the books that are you are reading this, which books do you plan to read? Just one. Which are the you plan to read? Are you have re reading list for this year? Anyone that you plan to buy and read? Write in the chat box. Then let's see. Awesome. Good. 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 Excellent. Do that. It's very powerful when it comes to contributing to your personality and attitude. And because of that point three, I want to give out all of my books. Of course, the soft copy of all my books, all of my, I think there are five altogether, this five or eight, I'll, I'll confirm. But I'll give out all of my books to PPA members for one 1,000 francs each. All my books sell in soft copy internationally. I think the list is 3,000 francs. Uh, that's how much? How many dollars? Uh, Six dollars, seven dollars or so. All sells that. But I want to give all of my books the, one, the ones on uh, making money as a young person, uh, uh, um, attitude, all of that. All of my books that are in... Um, let me see, I'm forgetting those. But I want to give all of my books, each for a thousand francs. Any of the books that you need for, I'll give all of my books for just a thousand francs. Let me see. I'm even forgetting titles of the books. Can you imagine? So how can you forget? Because they are many now. I want to check the ones that are available now. Hey, Dr. We need to be happy. I'm so grateful. This was my plan to get all your books. And I was like, how am I going to do to get all your books? Yes, like, so, oh my God. So I'll give all of these my books. Same year, sir. For one, one, two. Like, building a champion's attitude. How to begin from idea to action. Lean into your fears. How to conquer your fears and start living. Then... Uh, how how successful young people rule. This is there. Uh, with entrepreneurs, good plugs. This is available. Oh, wow. So I'm going to give all of this. I think there's another one. Yes, how to build wealth, the ground rules, the money code for young people. If you read this book and die broke. Let me tell you one thing about Thank this book. You. I wrote this book, few, I wrote this book, I think three years ago. And I gave myself a challenge that I'm only going to release this book when I've made 15 millions from the date I finished write, writing this book. So I gave myself a challenge. When I make 15 million francs in money, then I'll release this book. But what, what was I doing? I was trying to repractice the quotes I have shared in this book to myself to be double sure. 
Wow. That was, that was when I decided, okay, it's time to make this book public. So all of these books, I think that uh, I'll confirm the number all for one. I'm going to give those are taking it all. If you are buying one, I'm not giving you. Oh, shit. <laughs> you are taking it all at once. Then I give you 1,000 francs. If not, don't, don't, don't bother to come to my inbox. When you are ready, let me know. And the time Say that it, I'll confirm and let and leave in the chat box. And leave it in the, um, how do they call it? Wait, let me check. There's a folder for all those books, I think. Let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They are all together. No, eight then. There are 10. Then um, it, that including from average to forgettable, and then uh, 35 days of redefining for success. They are all together 10. But anybody wants to buy from five and above? I'll give you, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, there are 12 books really, actually, not 10. Never mind. I've seen, I've seen a place where I have all the books written. Okay. So you give that 12 for 10,000. You want to buy knowledge that costs 100 million for 10,000. Okay, I've, I've sent all the list of the books in the chat box. There are 12 of them. Um, yes, so anybody who buys from the least person you order from five and above, if you order less than five, don't bother. Will not, will not sell to you today. <laughs> All right. So let's continue and round up this session. Number four, planning of day and week. This is very important. There's no way that you're going to maintain the right attitude and personality if you leave your day to chance. You leave your day to chance. Your day is just anyhow. Like today, you have no idea how your Saturday is going to unfold. You have no idea how this week was. If I ask you now, but really, what did you plan to achieve this week? You cannot tell me anything. Having a clear plan of day and week can go a long way to help maintaining a positive attitude. By knowing what to accomplish, one will be able to focus on important life priorities. Many of us are not living excellent life because day in, day out, we do not focus on important life priorities. You waste your life energy and time on yeshua's people yeshua's tasks at the end of the day you are tired nothing to show for it how do you build a positive attitude and personality living like that tell me something how do you do that plan your day so that when you say you have a gap in this day you fit it with something important that's why i'm never i always have to i always have work to do i plan my days okay between two and three you see, there's no tax, there's no meeting with a the client, there's nothing, okay, okay, I feel, okay, between this time, I'm going to watch this video. Probably sometimes I keep some videos aside. Important videos about industry matters. I just copy the links and I keep. So when I see, so that there's no space for laziness. There's no space for mediocre thinking. There's no space for useless things. Like I was telling myself already, if you want to have lunch with me now, you have to tell me like three months, three, three weeks, at least three weeks ahead. Because at least worst case scenario, worst case scenario, my next three weeks are always already planned out. There's no space for laziness. There's no space for mediocrity. There's no space for useless actions. There's no space for, for things that don't advance my life forward. This is important. Be intentional about it. Critically intentional about it. It contributes massively. Mentees, those are mentorship who are doing the, 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 the weekly uh, um, task, the, the weekly mentorship task. You will bear with me that there is a change in how it has contributed to the kind of weekly personality that you manifest. And that task, I don't just do it, I do it for myself. I know the funny thing is that particular task that you guys do is a high paid coaching service that I provide to people. They like, they put that pay me a million a year just to hold them accountable every week. Do you guys know that? Like what I think that I give to mentees for free and they do it for free and they, and they even do with it. Let me show you, I closed a client just yesterday.
one thing that has contributed to me having a kind of personality that embodied towards my work, my work ethic, professionalism, comes from daily goals that I've been doing since 2012. I have been doing to-do lists, priority lists, daily priority lists, and weekly goal sheets since 2012 till today. I have never skipped a day. It has contributed a lot to my work ethic, to my personality, and of course, to the kind of attitudes that I embody towards work. Next, be thankful. Be thankful. Yes, thanksgiving and gratefulness is very powerful when it concerns building the right attitude. You should take some time and be thankful. You should be thankful about what you have, what you are today, and what your life is, is like right now. Be thankful about it. You have shelter over your head, be thankful. Can you afford house rent? Be thankful. Can you afford to eat every evening? Be thankful. Can you afford a job right now? Be grateful for that job. Others don't even have at all. Your first job is to be grateful. Others didn't even go to school, but you have a degree, be thankful. Many things that you can be grateful for, it contributes to your personality and the kind of attitude that you face life, that you can use to face life and live an excellent lifestyle. List eight things in your life you are most thankful for right now. Look at all your life in general, since the day you were born to now. What are the top eight things that you are most thankful for? Write it down. Be as specific as possible. Then look at it again. You'll see how blessed you are. Many times we focus on complaining about the things we don't have and we lose the beauty of life. We forget to enjoy the things that we have. And some people have been so ungrateful and they have lost the things that they have. They have lost it. Because ungratefulness can make your thank to be less. Invest in being thankful. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. There is no way that you're going to develop the right personality towards life. There's no way you're going to develop the right attitude towards life if you don't take responsibility. At any moment, your attitude can be that of a victim or of a creator. The first step you need to take to shift from, a, from victim mode to creator mode is to take responsibility. Take responsibility for your life. Take responsibility for your actions. Take responsibility for your indiscipline, for your procrastination, for your laziness, for your lack of knowledge. Take responsibility. You are not living an excellent life because you, you have allowed many things to chance. You are not taking life head on. Take responsibility for that life. Stop living life to chance. Stop sitting and complaining and blaming somebody for being responsible where you are. You will blame and you will end up being there for 10 years with nothing to show for. I create my life. I am responsible for me. I am in charge of my destiny. This is what I call responsibility code. I create my life. I am responsible for me. I am in charge of my destiny. This should be a manifesto. This should be your anthem every day. You set out every day, say, I create my life. God has given me the grace, the wisdom, and the strength. It is my job to start utilizing all of those resources he has invested into me, and I start creating my life. I know that I am responsible for me. 
I am in charge of the destiny God has given me. Nobody else is. That is how a creator takes responsibility. That is how a victor, that is how a champion takes responsibility. So this is your responsibility, affirmation code. Say this loud to yourself. Affirmations are very powerful. They have a way of bringing the right energy into you. They have a way of contributing to your rising and to your personality. If you are not, if you're in a quiet environment and you can speak and you can say this affirmation, everybody unmute yourself and I'll come from one to three and we all say it. Unmute yourself. If you're in a quiet environment, you know you can speak. Unmute yourself right now. <clears throat> All people will have. Let's get this serious. Okay, good. People are muted themselves. Excellent. Okay. One, two, ready, go. Create my, 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 my life. life. I am responsible for me. I create myself. My life. I am responsible for me. I am in charge of my destiny. Yes. 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 I am responsible you, for me. You I'm create my destiny. Your life. Yes. You create your life. You are responsible for you. You are in charge of your destiny. God has already released this grace upon you. Under the grace of God, this is who you should be. And when the Bible talks about the world is waiting for the endless manifestation. The world is eagerly waiting for you to create that life. The world is eagerly waiting for you to be responsible for yourself. The world is eagerly waiting for you to be in charge of your destiny. You need to rise up, people. You need to rise up. In conclusion, the approach you have towards life matters a lot. If you want to be a positive thinker, you will need to find good in yourself first and then reward yourself with success. From today, take the right approach towards life so you can win. All right, everybody, thank you so much. And I hope you were challenged, you were inspired, and you will set out today for the rest of the year, for the rest of your life, building and manifesting the right attitude and the right personality that will give you what you need to live an excellent life, excellent career, and an excellent business. Cheers, everybody.